My name is Todd, I'm with the Land of Math, and in this video we're going to talk about how you can add fractions and mixed numbers. Uh, also at the very end there's a little tip, some tips for teachers or parents to try to work with their students on it. Um, there's also a section in the middle where I kind of break down how to simplify fractions and also how to convert mixed numbers to improper and improper fractions back to mixed numbers. Just to make it a little easier in the description, I put a timestamp. So if you want to hop around a little bit, you can check out that and go right to the section you need to. Hopefully this is helpful. So let's get right to the video right now. The number one key thing when we're trying to add fractions is that our denominators have to be the same. If they are, we're good to go. Like in this example, if the denominators are different, you got to change them. We have to make them the same. So in a couple of examples right here, all these problems right here have the same denominator. So it's very easy. We just add the numerators to the top number and just keep the denominator. So we can see 3 11 and 2 11 is 5 11 9 19 8 19 is going to be 17 19 Now, sometimes when we add, we get an improper fraction. And when we get an improper fraction, it means our top number, the numerator, is going to be bigger than the denominator. So in this example, 4 fifths plus 2 fifths is 6 fifths. So this is an improper fraction. And so the answer is going to end up being 1 and 1 fifth. Okay? And so you might ask yourself, well, how is that going to be possible? So the one thing to always remember is fractions are actually division problems. So we can take our numerator, which in this case is 6, and divide it by our denominator, 5. And we get 1, and then we have this remainder of 1. We're going to put it on top. And then we'll just keep our denominator, in this case, 5, and we'll put it in the box. So the answer is 1 and 1 fifth. So in this example right here, we're going to add these two up. We're going to get 10 sevenths. 10 is going to go on the inside. The 7, the denominator is on the outside. 7 goes into 10 once. We have that remainder of 3, which goes on top. And we just keep our denominator of 7. So 1 and 3 sevenths. On the next problem, we're adding three different fractions. So we keep our 11 as their denominator. We add up all the numerators and we end up with 25. So now we're going to make our little division problem. So the numerator 25 divided by the denominator of 11. And we're going to find out the 11 goes in there two times. And we're going to have a remainder of 3. We move it to the top and just keep the 11. So the answer is going to be 2 and 3 11 Sometimes it's helpful to actually model um, changing an improper fraction to a mixed number. So for example, this fraction 6 fifths. What we can do is we can think of it as 5 fifths and a 1 fifth. Um, so together that would equal 6 fifths. The 5 fifths actually represents 1. Anytime you have a fraction, a numerator, denominator, the same equals 1. And then you have this 1 fifth left over, so it's 1 and 1 fifth. 10 sevenths, we can think of that as one fraction that would be 7 sevenths. And then that will leave us 3 sevenths. So this 3 sevenths and the 7 sevenths is 10 sevenths. The 7 sevenths represents 1 plus that 3 sevenths, and that's where we're getting our 1 and 3 sevenths. Now, for example, the 25 elevenths, we can think of that as 11 over 11 and another 11 over 11, and we'd have 3 left over, so it would be 3 elevenths. Now, the first two 11 elevenths, each of those would represent 1, and then we'd have our 3 elevenths left over. So our answer here would be 2 and 3 elevenths. We just add the two whole numbers and the 3 elevenths. Now, simplifying fractions. We're going to spend a little time talking about simplifying fractions because it's a pretty big deal. So first of all, let's say you just have a simple problem like 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, and you get 6 eighths. Now, this is an example of a problem that was simplified. We could divide both of these sides, or I'm sorry, both the top and the bottom by 2, and we get the answer 3 fourths. Now, we have a variety of problems right here. So the first one, when we add this up, we get 8 tenths. The next one, or excuse me, so we can divide both of those by 2 and end up with 4 fifths. The next problem, we'd add them up and get 9 twelfths. Well, we can divide the top number and the bottom number by 3. And when we do that, we get it with 3 fourths. Now, the next problem is 53 80ths plus 7 80ths. We get 60 80ths. And we can divide both of those by 10. We end up with 6 eighths. Now, this actually will simplify again because 2 will go into both of those. So when we do that, we end up with 3 fourths. 
All right, here's some tips to help you with simplifying fractions. When you're trying to find a number that will divide into both, here are a couple little easy ones. If both numbers are even, you know you can divide those numbers by 2. So if the numerator and denominator are both even, just divide by 2. Now, let's say you have a situation where one or both of them happen to be an odd number. Well, you know that 2 won't divide into them, but also any number that's also even won't work either. Now, any number that where both the numerator and the denominator end in 0, you know that 10 will divide into those. Now, it's possible you might have a 20 or something might go in there also, but at least you know 10 will work. It's very similar, if you have numbers that end in 5 and 0, you know that um, 5 will divide into both those. So, for example, 25 thirtieths, the 5 and the 0, you know 5 is going to divide into both of those. Now, the next one here, if you add up the digits in the numerator and it equals the number that we can divide by 3, and add up the digits in the denominator and equals the number that we can divide by 3, then 3 is actually going to be able to divide into both of those numbers. And so you can see some examples here where we add up the digits in the numerator and denominator. It's a number that we can divide by 3, so we know those fractions we can divide by 3. Okay, occasionally we're going to have some improper fractions where we also need to simplify them. And we have a couple options here to do this. So in this example here, 7 eighths plus 3 eighths is 10 eighths. Option number one, what we can do is we can take our fraction 10 eighths. We can find a number that divides into both the numerator and denominator, in this case 2, and we get our fraction 5 fourths. And then we take and make it a mixed number. So 4 goes into 5 once, and we have one remainder. Another option is to take the 10 eighths and go ahead and make it a mixed number first, and then simplify the fraction. In this case, we divide by 2, and so we get 1 and 1 fourth. So both answers were the same. Here's the same thing. We have 18 twelfths. The first example, we're dividing by 6. We end up with 3 seconds, and then we make it a mixed number. Here, we're going to make it a mixed number first. We are 1 and 6 twelfths, and then it simplifies to 1 and 1 half. You get the same answer both ways. This next section is probably the toughest section when it comes to world of fractions. Adding fractions in which the denominators are different. Now, one thing I like to do, I like to stack them up. So, for example, we can take one half and one third and we'll stack them up. We're looking for a number that both the two and the three would have in common, like a multiple. In this case, it's six. So, if we multiply our three by two to get six, we have to multiply the numerator by the same number, in this case, two. On the top one, we multiply two by three. We have to multiply the one by three as well. And you can see here we get five, six. Now, you could go um, horizontally with it as well. I kind of like to, to stack it. It's just a personal preference. So here's another example where I stack up 3 fourths plus 2 fifths. I go with 20 as a denominator. So you can see on the bottom, I multiply both of them by 4. And on the top, I multiply both by 5. So I end up here with 15 twentieths plus 8 twentieths. So I get 23 twentieths. Okay, and that would simplify to 1 and 3 twentieths. Now here's 1, 3 eighths plus 1 half. Again, stack them up. 8 is a good common denominator here, so we'll go with that. The bottom one, you'll notice I multiply both numbers by 4. The top one, I didn't have to change a thing. And so we end up with 7 eighths. And again, we could stack them up. Now, sometimes what happens is people just start multiplying uh, the, the, new, the denominators together to get a common denominator. In this case, you would have gotten 16. It still would work. We'd have 6 sixteenths plus 8 sixteenths is 14 sixteenths. But if you divide both those by 2, you get your 7 eighths just like the other way. It does save you a little work if you can notice that. Here's another example, 5, 6 plus 2 thirds. 6 is our common denominator. So the top one, we don't have to change anything. The bottom, we're going to multiply both by 2. So we end up with 9, 6. So we know 6 goes into 9 once. We have remainder 3. So it's 1, 3, 6, which is the same as a 1 and 1 half. Now, we could have used 18 as our denominator if we had multiplied 6 times 3. And you can see here we would, would have ended up with 27 eighteenths, which would equal 1 and 9 eighteenths, which would e equal ultimately 1 and a half. And so your answer is going to be the same whichever way you do it. All right, so in this next section, we're going to start adding mixed numbers. Now, the first example, we're going to have the same denominator. So I have 2 and 7 elevenths plus 3 and 1 eleventh. I'm going to stack them up here. You don't have to. If I add the fractions, I get 8 elevenths. If I add up the whole numbers, I get 5. 
On this one right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep them this way. I'm not gonna stack them up. So if I add up my whole numbers, I get 10. If I add the two sevenths and the three sevenths, I get five sevenths. Now, sometimes though we get improper answers when we do this with the same denominator. So in this example, I have three and four elevenths plus two and 10 elevenths. When I add them, my whole number is equal five. The fractions equal 14 elevenths. So the numerator is larger than the denominator. So I want to have to take my fraction here, the 14 elevenths, and turn it into a mixed number. So 14 elevenths is just kind of like saying 11 elevenths plus 3 elevenths, which would equal, which would be like saying 1 and 3 elevenths. So you add that 5 plus the 1 plus the 3 elevenths, and you end up with 6 and 3 elevenths. Okay, next example, we have 7 and 8 ninths plus 5 and 7 ninths. So, again, the denominators are the same. This time I just had to go ahead and stack them. So we're going to add them up. We're going to keep the 9 in our denominator. Our whole numbers are 7 plus 5 is 12. So we have 9 in the denominator. Um, now, you can see when we go 8 plus 7, we get 15. And the 7 plus 5 is 12. The 5 ninths, I'm sorry, 15 ninths, we need to turn that into a mixed number. In this case, it's going to be 1 and 6 ninths. So we're going to take that plus the 12, and we end up with 13 and 6 ninths. Now, this problem we can actually even simplify, because we can divide both the 6 and the 9 by 3, and that gives us 13 and 2 thirds. Now, our next example, we're going to start with the fraction, or mix number 20 and 15 seventeenths plus 9, 11 seventeenths. So if we add up the fractions, we have 26 seventeenths, 20 plus 9 equals 29. When I look at the 26 seventeenths, you can think of that as 1 and 9 seventeenths, and you would add that to 20, I'm sorry, 29. When you do that, you get 30, and we keep our fraction of 9 seventeenths. All right, this time we're going to add mixed numbers again, but this time the denominators are going to be different. So much like when we were adding fractions with different denominators, the key is to get the same denominator. So I'm taking 7 and 3 fourths, and I'm going to stack the 2 and 1 sixth, and we're going to add them up. The first thing is we need a good common denominator. For this one, 12 is probably the ideal. So we get our new, we change our numerators, and now we can add them up. So we have 11 twelfths, and we just add up a whole number, so 7 plus 2 is 9. So let's say we have this one. We have the, the mixed number 10 and 3 eighths. We're going to add 5 and 2 fifths. Now, again, I like to stack them up. You don't need to. So we'll go ahead and stack up those two mixed numbers. And what we need to do is find a good common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 40. So you can see I'd multiply 5 by 8. So I took 2 times 8 to get that 16. 8 times 5 is 40. So I took 3 times 5, got 15. I add up my numerators, get 31, keep the 40, and now just add up 10 and 5 and get 15. So that part is fairly easy. Where it gets a little more challenging is where we have different denominators and we're going to get improper fractions as our answer. So here's 5 and 3 fourths, and we're going to add that to the mixed number 1 and 1 half. So again, I usually like to stack them up, so we'll go ahead and stack them up here. So 5 and 3 fourths over top of 1 and a half. We need a good common denominator. Some people might use 8 because they want 4 times 2, but 4 is a better way to go. So that's what I'm going to use here. The top one's nice because we don't have to change it. The bottom one, I multiply 2 to get 4, so I multiply 1 to get 2. Add them up, I get 5 fourths, and then over here I get 6. 5 plus 1 was 6. We have to address the 5 fourths. Five, 4 goes into 5 one time, so it's 1 and 1 fourth. We add it to the 6, and so we get the mixed number of 7 and 1 fourth. Now, this next example, we're going to have the mixed number 3 and 5 eighths, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add that to the mix number 2 and 4 fifths. Now, again, I like to stack them up. You don't have to. So we add, stack them up. Again, we need a common denominator. In this case, it's 40. 5 went into 40 eight times. So I took 4 times 8. It got 32. 8 went into 45 times. So I went 5 times 5 to get 25. I add them up. We get 57 over 40. And 3 plus 2, the whole numbers, is 5. 40 is going to go into 57 three times, or I'm sorry, one time. And we take that 40 away from 57. We have 17 left over. That's where we get the 17 40th. 
Add that to the 5, and that's going to give us 6 and 17 fortieths. All right, here's another example. So we have the mixed number here, 7 and 3 fourths, and we're going to add 8 and 11 twelfths. So again, I always like to stack them. That's what we're doing. We need a good common denominator. Now for us, 12 is the best. Some people might take 12 times 4, and that's fine. You're going to deal with a bigger number like 48. So the bottom number, we didn't have to change. The top one, I multiplied by 3. So we end up, once we add, we get 20 twelfths and the 15. So we add that 15. Now the 20 twelfths, we're going to make it 1 and 8 twelfths. So if we add them all together, we get 16 and 8 twelfths. But that 8 twelfths will simplify. We can actually divide both by 4, and that's where we get our 16 and 2 thirds. All right, here are three tips if you're trying to teach fractions. Okay, so the first one, use prime numbers in the denominator to avoid simplifying. When you're first teaching it, you want to avoid too much stuff going on to confuse the kids. So, for example, if I take 1 6 plus 1 6 or 3 8 plus 1 8, I get fractions that can be simplified. If I use prime numbers like 7, in this first example, we get 5 sevenths, or 19, or in the last one here, we're going to use 5. The nice thing about using uh, prime numbers in my denominator, they don't simplify. All right, the second tip is make sure that the two fractions you're adding, when they add up, they're less than 1. So you may want to make sure both of them are 1 half or less. So, for example, the one third plus two fifths, the second one, two sevenths plus three eighths, last one, one tenth plus ten twentieths. I know that they're going to be less than one half each. So, the result will be an answer that's less than one, which will be a lot easier for the students. All right, so our third tip use factors of 12, 20, or 24 when working with fractions. So, for example, if I look at the number 12, I have the factors one, two, three, four. Um, 6 and 12. Now, all those numbers use the denominator, use factors the 12 to help you out. So in this case, if we're, we're adding our de common denominator would be 12. And you can see it's pretty easy to come up with numerators. We just add them right up and we get our answer. So like with the number 20, we can use the factors 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. We can use those numbers in our denominator spot. So here I'm using the 4 and the 10. And so once we get a common denominator, in this case, we'll just use 20 again. It's easy to figure out the numerator. So, for example, 4 times 5 is, is 20, so we just multiply the numerator by 5. And we can end up with 11 twentieths. It's a lot easier on these problems if you just pick the common factors of a certain number, because everything will come together a little bit easier for you. Since the last example is 15 twentieths, and I'll simplify all the way down to 3 fourths. All right. A lot of teachers and students like to change their mixed numbers to improper fractions when they add. And this does work. The reason I don't like to do it is because it creates a lot of extra work for us and increases the chance that we're going to make a mistake. So if you look at these two mixed numbers that we're adding up, we have to convert it into improper fractions. So we have 5 over 2 and 10 thirds. We then have to get common denominators, which in this case is 6. And so we end up with 35 over 6. And now we have to divide by 6, and we're going to, we're going to end up with 5 and 5, 6. And that's not too bad, but if you look at this next problem, this one is going to be quite a challenge. We're going to have to change these mixed numbers to um, fractions in which we have 167 and 47 in the numerator spot. Once we get a common denominator, we're talking about numbers in the hundreds, where on the right you can just see it looks a lot simpler.